You know. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 12. What? Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. We have enough tracks for an album. We do. We have enough track, And then next week, we do our super secret bonus one that's not <laughs> right. actually on the liner notes. <laughs> right, right. And then make sure that it never shows up in Spotify. And you're like, how come I never hear that song? Well, it's because they were clever in 1975. Right. And they recorded, had the time this, then. recorded this damn song. Uh, the uh, song Alex picked today is Zanzibar, <laughs> which is uh, a fun song. It comes out, it does come up in my playlist uh, plenty. It, it ain't my favorite, um, <laughs> but I don't dislike it. It's a weird, it's a weird little tune. It's a weird little tune. It's, uh, I think, yeah, certainly not uh, a top 20. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it is him once again trying to sound like somebody. I think so, too. I speculate Barry Manilow. Oh, interesting. It reminds me of Barry Manilow at the very least. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I thought uh, Steely Dan yeah okay um but that whole album is like him playing with jazz yeah <laughs> like oh i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a jazz guy now yeah which obviously i don't know that his heart and soul is in it because it doesn't come up again really yeah <laughs> uh well no that's not true um like big band on mulberry street is i guess like big band jazz and there i think he knocks it out of the park yeah here, it's uh, in the park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a grounder to third. Yeah. Big Man on Mulberry Street is more like, uh, like you said, big band jazz, whereas this is almost trying to be experimental jazz. Like loungy. Loungy, yeah. It's weird because it's like if you did experimental jazz, but you were like, yeah, but I want to keep it in the lines. And you're like, well, that's not experimental jazz. <laughs> right. It's an experiment for me because yeah. I don't know jazz. But if now, you know I, jazz, did not, I did not boring. know this, huh? It's like, if you know jazz, this is boring. But if yeah. you don't, it's crazy and experimental. Yeah. And if you don't know jazz, it's crazy and experimental and also kind of boring. But listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know uh, and, this i was looking at the album and i was looking at just uh and then i was looking at other albums i did not know how often he worked with phil specter i did not know that <laughs> yeah i guess everybody did yeah of course um an innocent man phil specter um features prominently which makes sense because you're going for that 50s 60s sound so oh, i um, thought you would say it makes sense because phil specter was innocent yeah <laughs> <laughs> well wrong wrong convicted yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> the only thing he's guilty of is loving too much alex <laughs> and the shooting and the shooting the face uh but mostly the loving mostly the loving <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh phil specter where we should should we say that we're recording this at a very different time of day for both of us Yes, absolutely. So we were recording 9 a.m. my time. Noon over here. I'm still drinking coffee. Yeah. Because um, it's Sunday. And I have uh, not woken, enough, woken up enough to get coffee, so that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, normally, normally and hopefully this won't happen often. I mean, it's probably not bad for you. Noon is probably not terrible. Noon's fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, the sun doesn't go down for another two hours. <laughs> so, it's all good i'll do this and then i'll have my day yeah yeah and i'll do this and start yeah because my deal was uh this is doctor appointment week so that's oh, what, yeah that's why we're doing that oh uh, the worst yeah you know i have a new lady uh lady uh primary yeah and, uh she brought up that i'm gonna have to have the old man test which one? 
The one where they put the finger in your butt. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and I literally thought, which is just a dumb thing to think, but I thought, ah, I'm glad I switched to a lady doctor. <laughs> so, <laughs> for like sexual preference or reasons or smaller hands um well small hands is a good idea but it's more just like i just don't want it to be a dude all right yeah that's not it seems like that's not super woke but. yeah but see i'm woke in a lot of areas just not my butt <laughs> all right i mean i guess that is the the final frontier yeah what goes in your butt well see i don't want nothing there uh, i don't like uh, i don't like stuff around there and yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it really is like four seconds out of your year so yeah. it's not <laughs> but it stays with you that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> i like that oh that's really funny if you were doing stand-up now that's a solid start for a bit <laughs> thanks man <laughs> and uh, god bless you for not needing to do stand-up <laughs> oh I can't do it. It's too lonely. Yeah. You, so just for people who don't know, Alex can, I've seen him do it. He's very funny, but it is a lonely. It's a lonely pursuit. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Some people, you also have all the control, which is nice. Um, and a frustration in the field I'm working in is that I have to collaborate with uh, dumb people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um it's yeah you it's like getting the bad lab partner yeah a lot oh that's great <laughs> anyway yeah that makes sense so zanzibar let's talk about some zanzibar um it's a bad experimental jazz i picked this song like on the fly because the title always was great to me and because i thought Oh, I live in New York now. I can go to a lot of these locations where that are mentioned in Billy Joel songs. And I thought, oh, Zan I'll bet Zanzibar is a real bar. Uh, so I actually did look it up. And no, it's not. It's not. It's, yeah. It's a word he heard and thought would sound good in a song. Yeah. And now it's, Zanzibar is a place, right? It is a country. Right. Uh, <laughs> song has nothing to do with that exactly so i when i heard this song first you know how the song will just play and you won't necessarily grok into all the lyrics right away you'll just kind of hear the yeah. song so i had a similar experience except that i thought oh this is a song about an exotic place and then you listen to the lyrics and you're like no it's not it's the least exotic place and it sounds like it should be. That's kind of a funny thing with the music makes it seem like now. Oh, and I want to bring this up too. the music makes it seem like it's going to be about Zanzibar, the country and wild experiences, but it's not. And I read the music came first. And that's an interesting thing with songwriters. Yeah. They all kind of approach it differently. But yeah. it's almost usually like I have this riff and I'm going to build it out. Um, the other thing that really made me laugh is that first you think, oh, it's Zanzibar. It's going to be about something or an exotic place. Then the, you hear the song and then you're like, oh, it's jazz. And it's like smoky jazz and it's called Zanzibar. So it's going to be about like a cool, mysterious jazz club. And then you listen to it and you're like, it's a sports bar. It's yeah. a sports bar. Yep. And you're like, oh, Billy. Yeah. What are you doing? That's either insane, brilliant, or accidental. And I'm going to say accidental. Yeah. I, and based on our, our guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was accidental. Or, or it was like, oh, I should fix this now that it's about this. Yeah. And he just went, ah, I already got Allentown on this album. I'm right. good. <laughs> so I thought, so I honestly hear a lot of Barry Manilow. Mainly what I was thinking of was any Barry Manilow story song. Yeah. Most 
um, legendarily Lola, of course, it feels to me like that sort of a story song that said it is musically, except that, of course, Lola is this very big story. And I think this is a story about a guy who gets drunk sometimes. It's a guy who gets drunk sometimes and thinks the waitress is hot. Yeah. And I think... So, relatable. Yeah. But Jesus, there's yeah. nothing here. And kind of maybe great in that way. I If, you know, just because I like Billy Joel, it's like, eh, that's really funny. Um, so let's <laughs> dig into the lyrics such as they are. Such as they are. All right. Allie dances and the audience applauds. Though he's bathed in sweat, he hasn't lost his style. Allie, don't you go downtown. You gave away another round for free. Who's Allie? Is, it, is he a dancer at this place? Or is he a guy dancing because it's they dance there? Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. It's Muhammad Ali. Oh! Why am Which I so is dumb? Why it's, here's why you're dumb. Because... It's uh, lyrically confusing because of the meter of the song. He has to say Ali instead of Ali. Oh. So you don't make the connection <laughs> that it's Muhammad Ali. Oh. He says Ali dances and the audience applauds. And you're like, who the fuck is Ali? If he had said Ali, you would yeah. know yep. immediately. So he's dancing and the audience is applauding. He's bathed in sweat. He's not boxing. You could have said he's boxing. Yeah. So you know what you're talking about. <laughs> it took me a lot, several listens uh, when I first heard this song to know what the hell was going on. Because, you know, then it's more sports slang. Yeah. Ali, don't you go downtown which of course is boxing slang for hitting somebody in the balls, which is you get in trouble for that. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you get points deducted and you lose the round, you give away another round. Okay, so now here's what I'm confused about then. Um, first, there's a lot I know about Muhammad Ali. I, I, he's a legend and all that stuff. And I don't think he's legendarily a guy who hit you in the balls. <laughs> exactly that's peculiar it, it this feels like late stage muhammad ali or like he hasn't lost his style so clearly he's had style for a while it's an established thing about him okay um but yeah this is like uh now here's here's a funny thing and this happens a lot is I've heard it. I've heard it. I've always imagined it was somebody dancing. Right. So, and I never mentally corrected that in my head. So, of course, it just stayed that for decades, but it's Ali. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now that's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it is dumb. His name's uh, not Ali. His name's nobody says Muhammad Ali. Yeah. And when you hear Ali dances, you're like, oh, it's a lady. There's a lady dancing. Yeah. So you either hear Ali dancing or what I had originally heard was like it was an exotic, like Ali Baba or something. In my mind, I was like, is, is that what you're going for? Like there's a guy on a carpet and there's magic. <laughs> right? Because the song is called Zanzibar. So you think maybe something mystical and magical is going on. Yeah. But no, you're watching a late stage Muhammad Ali fight on a TV in a bar. Yeah. Cool. I am. Uh, so I'm first in line to say, you know, maybe he meant this great thing because I like a lot of what Billy, but this is, that's just bad i think that's just bad <laughs> it's, a, it's yeah almost deliberately confusing yeah it could have been cleared up pretty easily and it's your first it's the first set of lyrics so you haven't given me anything before this so this is just the first thing you said right i'm going to complain about one more thing ali dances and the audience you know, the audience at the boxing show. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you call the people who go to a boxing match? The audience? Yeah, I don't think you do. Yeah. No. They're spectators. It's the crowd. The crowd. Um, all, I guess, the wrong number of syllables. Yeah. <laughs> Um, really just a fucking train wreck of an opening. <laughs> yeah. And you could call the people who watch a boxing match an audience as, you know, talking about it being a show, but, but only if you've been clear in the first part. Yeah. You've got to be clear in the first or the second part. Just one of the parts has to tell me what's going on. It's bonkers. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> um have to say the music is interesting and again that's where i get the barry manilow part uh um, yeah. all right go ahead with the next set all right me i'm just another face at zanzibar but the waitress always serves a secret smile she's waiting out in shantytown she's gonna pull the curtains down for me for me <laughs> um i like that the first verse he we he's telling us what muhammad ali is doing and immediately the second verse like me here's what i'm up to yeah it's the same <laughs> please carry the same weight right <laughs> ali is doing this and i'm doing this i'm just another face at zanzibar uh-huh that seems accurate but the waitress always serves a secret smile. This is the dude who thinks the stripper really likes him. Yeah. Or the sales girl who told him that the sweater looks good on him. I don't think the waitress is serving a secret smile. No, not at all. Do this weird looking five eight. <laughs> Run, gag off. Complaining about Muhammad Ali's work. <laughs> yeah and that part i think i'll give him credit that this one's intentional he's telling us he's a dumb sucker who's oh for sure she's gonna get with me but um, i think it plays out that she doesn't throughout the song i don't think we ever get the impression that he scores i don't know but i do hate this weird time jump in the middle of a verse He's a face at Zanzibar. The waitress serves a secret smile. She's waiting out in Shantytown. What happened? She was in the bar a second ago. She's waiting out in Shantytown now? Yeah. Also, where the fuck is Shantytown? <laughs> Does she live in like a tent in the park? <laughs> yeah, she it lives in a 1940s... <laughs> He lives in a Uberville. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and another thing I'm going to go ahead and hate, she's going to pull the curtains down. You pull the blinds down, you pull the curtains closed. Oh, yeah. You pull the curtains down. <laughs> that's, you've had, a, you're having a big fight. Yeah, because you tore pulls yeah, the curtains yeah. down. Tore the curtains down. She threw them over your head and beat you with that stick that you keep the curtains up with. That's, I mean, that's life in Shantytown. <laughs> yes. And you know why? What I'll tell you what happened is uh, he ate her last can of beans. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah. And also, when you open them, don't leave the lid sticking up. Just yeah, grab it all the way through. Take the lid off. Yeah, exactly. When I'm cutting myself, because you come on. Come on, man. What kind of hobo are you? <laughs> uh, so this is a song of a song of hobo love, is what it is. <laughs> He's in love with a hobo waitress. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I didn't do the research, but I do want to find out. Like, is there a, like a neighborhood in Queens called Shantytown or something? <laughs> they were willing to bet money. There's not. Um, I'm gonna quickly but, Google, but I'm do not. Do you like the idea, by the way, of a uh, of a theme restaurant? It's a hobo restaurant, and a waitress comes over with her bindle. <laughs> you know, there was that uh, 
uh, poverty themed restaurant called Po Folks. Oh yeah. Remember that joint? Yeah. Um, and they would serve drinks in mason jars and they'd have like fried catfish. Fried catfish is good, but also- uh... What an insane theme for a restaurant. Yeah. I mean, not as bad as Sambo's, but yeah. Jesus. <laughs> The 70s were, uh, speaking of woke, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> Sambos. Oh, there was one of those in my neighborhood. And it was long enough past when the source material, I didn't know the source material, so it was just a name. Oh, great. But then they disappeared, and so I was like, what happened to those? And they told me, and I was like, oh, okay, well, that's good they're gone, then. That's good they're now Cocos. <laughs> it's a little better. <laughs> what happened? It became a Cocos. <laughs> Baby steps, I guess. <laughs> it went to, I guess, the original Sambo's is in San Bernardino, California. It's not uh, still there, right? It's still there. Oh. It's still called Sambo's, and it's like historically preserved or something. Oh. Uh, but it is like, you have this feeling like, you don't need to do this. Yeah. Just make tear it down or make it a Denny's or something. Do, and they, they're still open, or is it a museum piece? I mean, this was a, a little while ago that I went, but it's still, yeah, it's still open and functioning. And, wow. the, you know, there's a bunch of plaques of like, this is the only one left. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, I'll bet it is. Yeah, I imagine that the waitress goes, welcome to Sambo's. I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> welcome your... to, uh, you know, and then she points at the sign. Yeah, here are your drinks. Again, I'm sorry. I just want to say. <laughs> so there's, I looked at, there's no shanty town. <laughs> except for like the tent villages erected by the poor now that so that says to me that was when he says shantytown he either is using it as um oh she lives in a poor neighborhood so he's he's calling it she doesn't literally live in shantytown or he didn't know what shantytown meant <laughs> right <laughs> Good, or both yeah <laughs> i could either uh -huh. or yeah and then yeah. uh, we got our chorus. I've got the old man's car. I've uh -huh. got a jazz guitar. I've got a tab at Zanzibar. Tonight, that's where I'll be. I'll be. I don't is know music he, very well. There is there a guitar you specifically jazz? I'm just curious. Uh, I think there is. Yeah. Um, or there, you know, there is kinds of guitars that you're more likely to use in jazz. Okay. Yeah. Your 12 string guitar. Oh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it, that I've heard before. Yeah. Um, and luckily it rhymes with Zanzibar. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with the chorus. The chorus is fine. I'd always just wondered that because I always, again, I'm bad at music. So, um, but I'd always thought, um, the the what the instrument is is more what you're playing and i think most of the time that's true right i think most of the time that's true because a classical violinist and a violin in country music is more or less the same violin right it's how you it's all what you do with it it's all the stuff you're doing yeah, yeah. i think it'd be like uh, a jazz oriented guitar yeah <laughs> 12 string guitar but you could play country music on it i think yeah i've got the jazz oriented guitar see syllables yeah <laughs> um he gets himself in so many lyrical jams over syllables <laughs> just a couple of rewrites i bet you can find a way through this but yeah. no this is fine um, which i think was a, a mindset people had and still do where like the lyrics are important, but they're not as important as uh, the singing and the flow and of the music. Yeah. So, like if it doesn't quite make sense, that's fine. Um, which, you know, there are schools of thought, I guess, you know. Yeah. I, it mostly is fine. Well, yeah, I mean, well, 
a million million or so dollars later, it was fine. So um, I will note that uh, once again, he's got an old man. <laughs> Which I think was in last week's song. Oh yeah, all for Lena. Yeah, his old man was yelling at him about something. Oh, that's true. And now he's got his old man's car. And uh, this is a little departure for him to uh, have a jazz guitar. For sure. So, I mean, he will sing in other personas a lot. We, we know he wasn't in Vietnam and he wasn't a steel worker in Allentown and he's not a jazz guitarist by any stretch. Yeah. I, I, don't... I remember the first time I saw the video for a matter of trust and he, he's playing the guitar and it really looks like um, when you see an actor smoking and they, they don't smoke. Right. <laughs> you can tell is they're smoking like this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, you're not a guitarist. Yeah. Does can he play at all? Maybe he can. He probably can play a little bit because he's been around. I'm sure. For, I feel like all musicians can play a little bit on a lot of instruments. Yeah. But jazz, I doubt. Yeah. Most of you are not Prince. You're not. You're not. You can play everything. No. You can play piano and like organ. <laughs> <laughs> And, and organ i like that <laughs> um do we think he like is playing sets at zanzibar and he's like watching sports between sets of playing jazz um no i don't think he is um maybe billy thinks he is but i think when i think about the character <laughs> i think the character who thinks he's hooking up with the girl in shantytown and this is going to work out i i like to imagine he brings it with him hoping he's going to get invited, hoping he's going to get a chance, and he don't. Uh, I like that. Because then it's solidly pathetic, and it just makes more sense to me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good through line of patheticness. Years ago, I did a show with Mr. Paul Goebel, and we were oh, done. Sorry. The show was over. Paul had finished, walked off stage, and this guy ran on stage and goes, I do comedy too. And, Just out of the crowd? Huh? Some dude out of the crowd? Yeah. Oh and boy. He, and he goes, I do comedy too. And it wasn't like, it wasn't the improv. It wasn't like a place where you can imagine you might get discovered and sure, this is a bad idea. This was in Sholo, Arizona. <laughs> at a casino gig we had. And he got up and he told jokes for 30 or 40 minutes. And for wow. some reason, they didn't kick him off stage. And I guess some of his friends stayed and watched him. And then, was of course, people started leaving. And that's not how a show works. <laughs> <laughs> was he any good? No, no. Yeah, that seems right. No, he was he was good in as much as he remembered some things from the joke book he had read. Ah, uh, sure. Well, I book. guess if you uh, are that bad at society, you're probably bad at comedy too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how anything works. Here are yeah. my observations. Here I am, <laughs> and I don't. I like to imagine that we didn't see it, but later on he went to the guy who runs it and went, so now when do I get paid? Because <laughs> you might uh, as well think that if you think that you just get, get up and do shows. Uh, uh, Ike Barinholtz, who is very funny, uh, used to do a character who was a stand-up comedy whose observations were all wrong. It'll be things like, you know, how you can, you know, everybody's got that one friend who's always carrying a ladder, <laughs> carrying a ladder around. What's his deal? <laughs> it, was like, it was so great. That's hilarious. And it was, it's so true that even that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's great. It was really great. All right, I think it's you. All right, back into the verses. Rose, he knows he's such a credit to the game, but the Yankees grab the headlines every time. Melodrama's so much fun. 
in black and white for everyone to see. Whoa. So we're just talking about the newspaper now. Yeah. I, I Yeah, I guess in black and white for everyone to see. So why are we talking about the newspaper? I don't know. He's so boring, this character. Ro Ro Pete Rose, obviously. Right. That's who we're talking about. He's a credit to the game. This was obviously before the scandal went down. Yeah. <laughs> Just, again, a great foresight yeah. from, from Billy Joel. Now, who did Pete Rose play for? Because I don't know. Was it the Cardinals? Cardinals, yeah. Um, but the Yankees grab the headlines every time. Your, uh, your character lives in New York. So yes, the Yankees <laughs> grab the headlines every time. All yes, all the New York papers they write about the Yankees and the Mets. Yeah. How is Pete Rose going to catch a break? Yeah. <laughs> and I guess the year this was the song, what, the year it was written, and not this would be an easy guess anyway, because the Yankees are those sons of guns really do pretty well. <laughs> but they were champions at the time. In in addition. They were going through a streak of winning a bunch of series at the time when he wrote the song, mm -hmm. so they were at the top of their uh, uh, at the top of their game, as yeah. they say. Yes, that's how they grab those headlines yeah. by being the best team by being ridiculous. Yeah, I have a. It's funny too because this mentioning the Yankees in this song, they don't need the Yankees in this song necessarily, and that's a very New York thing. I have a buddy. He's a he's a Yankees fan. Do you care about baseball? I don't. Okay, cool. So my buddy is from New York and he cares about baseball. And a uh, great dude. Uh, but man, the Yankees will come up a lot. Yeah. And that's very much a New York thing. It's very much a New York thing. It's um, I hear so much of it at work especially from the crew and the security guys and our host and a lot of the writers. And I'm like, who? I don't, I never fully understand. Like there's like 160 games a year. Yeah. They're all four hours long. <laughs> who, how can you invest? Who has the time? It, Seth's not a Yankees fan though, right? Cause he's Boston, right? He's yeah. He's a Sox fan. Um, but, you know, that also requires you to talk about the Yankees. Oh, yeah. The Sox is the same way. <laughs> they won't shut up about it. Yeah. Um, I Yeah. Well, you know, we grew up in Arizona. There wasn't really baseball at the time. Yeah. So there's a lot of those things when you move to New York where you're like, everybody watches every baseball game and they listen to all nine hours of Howard Stern every day. <laughs> like, doesn't anyone have a job? <laughs> it's very expensive to live here. <laughs> doing all of this yeah. uh, <laughs> and people are like did you did you hear stern today like, no oh the God. radio I to be what year is it? <laughs> it's i'm doing a podcast on my computer who's listening to the radio <laughs> also who's listening to this podcast <laughs> these are good what's questions. happening <laughs> these are good questions oh uh, but here's a little side note. Um, he does do this song in concert sometimes, but he's changed the line to Rose. He knows he'll never make the Hall of Fame. Okay. Which is good. Um, yes, obviously he knows that. It, but thank you. <laughs> I like that he updated that. Yeah. But uh, still Shantytown is still in there. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny because yeah. Queen. You know, uh, our friend, you know, Weird Al doesn't do the uh, bad in concert anymore or uh, eat it anymore. Huh? Because I've seen him in concert a few times, and he just said, "Ah, just I don't want to be doing my show. I like those songs, and I don't want to be doing my show. And then I do that song, and I don't want anybody in the audience to go, huh? Yeah, he did those things. So." <laughs> Great. Yeah. So I guess you do adjust. I, I'm of the, I'm of two minds. Like I kind of feel like leave the line the same, 
it's fine. He can do what he wants. But I'm always just like, ah, the, the line is of a time. Sure. I think it's more for uh, the audience reaction. Oh, yeah. The audience knows what the real line is. And then they go, oh, yeah, cute, clever. Yeah. Yep. And he yeah. won't. <laughs> Um, obviously, uh, it's Miami 2017, he changes a lot of things to make them more current. Yeah. Uh, and it's all just so the audience will go, ah, hey. hey. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you spent all your time updating every song. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you'd have to drop a lot of them. Yeah. Probably yeah. have to change Allentown to a different location now that there's no steel industry. I mean, you yeah. know. Change the lyric to, she had a way about her. <laughs> <laughs> she died of ms 10 years ago she doesn't <laughs> i'm sorry that's oh god oh that's uh wonderful right. <laughs> um me i'm trying to just to get to second base ah well maybe quit reading your newspaper uh and i'd steal it if she only gave the sign She's going to give the go ahead. The inning isn't over yet for me. Well, that's pretty Great. good. That's pretty good. That's, I mean, yeah. It's classic baseball sex stuff. Classic, classic but played out a little longer. Yeah. Um, second base, we all know. Stealing second base is, you know, she's going to give the go ahead. Now we're getting very. This metaphor is going to crack under its own weight yeah. if it goes. On Stealing much second base, by the way, I think is a assault. No, I, not if she gives the sign. If she gives the sign, yes, that's true. Of course. Yeah, then it, it does fall apart because uh, in baseball, the second baseman doesn't give you the sign. Yeah. No. <laughs> Your coach gives you the sign. Yeah. So. And you're a, and in, if it's a sex, you're the coach as well then, right? Because your inner monologue is the coach if you're, if you're using the metaphor for sex. Right. Yes. So, so if the metaphor is going to hold up, if the waitress gives him the sign to steal second base, he has to go to second base with a different lady. <laughs> <laughs> because the waitress becomes the manager. Right. And anyway, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a mess but only yeah. if you think about it which I, nobody listening to this song would think that deeply because it does put you to sleep yeah <laughs> analysis wise yeah listening yeah this one is functionally fine this is just baseball stuff and but it, 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 it ties to the previous verse yeah. which is all about baseball also yeah although i don't know why I, I don't know why we got the newspaper in the first. The, the other one, the only part that bothers me is that we're at a bar and you're trying to hit on this lady. And also here's the newspaper. That just seems <laughs> weird. It's, I mean, if you've been to these dive bars, there are dudes sitting there reading the paper. Yeah. Or like playing checkers or something. Yeah, and that's I, true. All kinds of activity goes on. But not if you're sitting there with your dumb jazz guitar, hoping to get on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he, also he is self-aware, I think, at this point in the song that he's not getting anywhere with this waitress. Yeah. So um, did he show he up? Like gambler's hope, like the inning isn't over yet. Right. Like, yeah, oh, that's true. That's true. We're, in that sense, it's consistent and it lets us know is this sucker thought he was going to get with this girl and it uh, doesn't look like he is. Yeah. And that's good as far as consistency. But also, you came to this bar with too much stuff. <laughs> you have a bunch of crap in your hands. This is why he had to bring his old man's car. Yeah. He's taking the subway. He's, he's loaded his car up and his dad's like, you're just going to a bar. Well, why do you have all that paper? My guitar. I might have to spend the night in Shantytown. Yeah, he's got a little valise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you'll be back no i won't <laughs> yeah good luck with that lady uh, now we got our our uh chorus again i'll just read that so you can do the next verse um all right uh 
I've got the old man's car. Okay, good. He's still got the old man's car. I've got a jazz guitar. I've got a tab at Zanzibar. Tonight, that's where I'll be. I'll be. I guess I do kind of now that it occurs to me that obviously this is just a ver uh, chorus repeating. But there is something kind of nice and pathetic of it's another night. I got my guitar again. You, fellas, no? Okay. All right. This is where I'll be. Uh, I kind of like that because it does kind of give us a repeated. Now that actually that part works, whether intentional or not, because the being at the same damn bar again, doing the same damn thing again, you know, yeah. pining over the same waitress again. That's that's pretty solidly true and sad and good and relatable for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, you could fix this whole damn song by just fix the first verse and don't confuse me about Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> For real, because the rest of it is is fine. It's fine. It's fine. For what it is. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, there is one amazing thing about this song, and it's uh, the trumpet. Which, you know, has nothing to do with the lyrics, but there are two amazing solos. Yeah, musically, but, there's a lot going on that's very interesting. Yeah, there's a, he's a guest trumpeter. Trumpeter? Um, and I don't remember his name. He was, I guess, a famous in jazz circles. Uh, and the solos are amazing. Yeah. And that's fantastic. And has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, except to give it a song to live in. Yeah. And so I think those happen after the choruses. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it is really, and it, uh, it makes sense that he would do it live because live, it's probably just fantastic every time. Yeah. Because you've got stuff for your musicians to do. And yep. since it is a little jazzy, and I'm going to just say it's a little jazzy, but if it, since it is a little jazzy, um, if you're a musician, it's fun to play, which in turn means you're going to give a show. Yeah, you can kind of let them go wild. Yeah, any songs like that that like, you know, any any good song like that, like if you're ever playing Layla, you're going to have fun. So, yeah. You know, I went to see uh, Hall & Oates at the Hollywood Bowl once, uh, which was fantastic. And a lot of their stuff is obviously soul and jazzy. Yeah. And they played for like an hour and a half and I think it was six songs. <laughs> it was just like, now you go for a while. Ugh. Now Daryl is gonna drink a bottle of water while you play the saxophone until uh, you can't breathe anymore. Um, and it was great. Yeah. But at some point you're like, do man eater. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, with my friend Tom, I have been to see the uh, Bare Naked Ladies a bunch. Right. And, uh, and they're a ridiculously good band. Yeah. They're, they do the thing. And because I've seen a lot of bad bands play, bands where I'm like, you're barely a musician. Yeah. You know, I, I just happen to, have, I'm sure you have as well. Sure. But there's moments when they switch guitars and you listen to the song and you're like, I can tell that made a difference. <laughs> oh that's nice <laughs> yeah yeah and their thing is they'll go on and on they don't do the jazz thing where the song goes on too long they do so much comedy oh great because their lead singer is hilarious their whole band's really hilarious and they do weird covers like they'll cover a britney spears tune and it'll just be really funny they right. do that thing and it's the same but it's the same sort of thing like they're good enough musicians that they also do a made-up song almost every show. They'll just start singing and playing, and then the song will oh, happen. Yeah. Fantastic. I love stuff like that. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I, I like it when bands are nice and aware of their audience. Yeah. Uh, what I did not feel at that Hall & Oates show. <laughs> 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 yeah. They didn't care if we were there or not. Yeah, uh, Diana Kroll. I went to see Diana Kroll live, and she's great. You know Diana Kroll, of course. Sure. I uh, went to see her live and, and it was the same thing where I was like, she didn't need me here. And it was fine because she was great. Yeah. But if nobody had showed up, she had done the same show and she would have been perfectly happy. 
here's uh, where Billy Joel is fantastic because he is very much there for the audience. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to make this sound like the album because that's what you like. I'm going to encourage you to sing along. He does a fielder's choice where he won't say like, I'm going to do this song next. He will say, you guys want to hear Summer Highland Falls or Allentown? Who wants Summer Highland Falls? <laughs> like two. And then like, all right. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Sometimes they're false choices because nobody wants to hear one of them. <laughs> but it's great. And he'll tell stupid stories. And they're never stories about like, oh, I was on Mick Jagger's bus. Uh, the first time I saw him in Tucson, he walked out on stage and sat down at the piano and burped in the microphone. I think I told you this before. Yeah burped in the microphone and said sorry there were radishes backstage <laughs> and then he started playing a song i was like great this you're so <laughs> you're so long oh, island that's great i saw uh randy newman live and it was similar that he just he's very chatty yeah and he really wants to get the laugh and he gets it you know he goes for the laugh and he gets oh, the sure. laugh and they're not necessarily big laughs but they're just warm you up and then you groove into a little tune and he he's smart enough not to play that one song where he says the n-word and it shows great <laughs> what song is that it's intentional because the character's racist and uh he uh you know randy newman like um so since we're talking about billy joel i'll just juxtapose it so billy joel will often write as characters uh -huh. But it almost sometimes seems semi-accidental because you're like, I think this is just you, right? We talk about that a lot where this is a character, but eh, it's really just Billy Joel. And sometimes it's a character. Randy Newman uh, writes a ton of songs that are designed to be like, I mean, one of the reasons he's not that accessible is he'll write a song where it's like, this is a redneck sheriff and it's not Randy Newman uh, even a little bit. Right. And, he, and he does it with a drawl and you know not like all his songs are great necessarily but that's what he does yeah i so think uh, that song i love la yeah is a great example of that because everybody in la thinks that song is great and that he really loves la yeah <laughs> I'm like, mm, i don't think that's what that was yeah he's got this song called sail away which is written from the perspective of a slave boat captain <laughs> oh God. talking, um, trying to, it's almost like he's trying to sell a potential slave on how great America is. Oh boy. It's a, it's, it's a funny song. It's worth listening to But yeah, that's, he does that a lot. Oh, I don't know enough Randy Newman, I guess. I'll have to check. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think uh, I think, I think it's, it's the last verse now. Yeah, is that you or me? I'll do it. Do it. Tell the waitress I'll come back to Zanzibar. <laughs> I'll be hiding in the darkness with my beer. She's waiting out in shanty town. She's gonna pull the curtains down for me. Okay, now he knows that I think the inning is over. Yeah. But <laughs> he's not even going to tell her himself. He is standing in the doorway with his guitar and his newspaper. <laughs> like, will you tell her that I'm coming back? <laughs> oh. He's waiting out in chance. So is she pulling the curtains down so that he can't like look in her window? <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. And then, by the way, the guitar never made it out of the case. No. Yeah. This did not work he's, out. He's got a jazz guitar, but if you listen to the song, uh, the guy with the trumpet, I think, is going home with the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> so he struck out. Um, yeah, it's. I guess it's ultimately, it's just a little mood piece. Yeah. It's pretty clear, by the way, that's that part's definitely not accidental. He wrote a song about a loser. That part, for sure, we were never meant to think this guy's a winner. We're always meant to think this guy is a wannabe something. Yeah. 
Um, a little bit of a departure, I guess, for him, because so many of his songs are about like how he's great and everybody else is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or he's right and everybody else is wrong. Or they're boring and he's fun. Yeah. This one is just like, uh, I kind of suck and I can't get laid. And yeah. I, I'm going to go home. Um, and he's doing the thing uh, a lot. I think all guys have done this at least once, but some particularly pathetic suckers do this a lot, which is they grok onto one girl and that girl turns them down. And then they're like, let's try again with that girl, which is not a good strategy. No. Uh, I feel like a woman likes you X amount and then it, you can only make it go down. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost impossible to make a woman like you more than she initially does. Yeah. Certainly as far as romantic. Yeah. For sure. Unless you're going to marry her and you're building that, but that's not what you're doing yeah. in Shantytown. Certainly not if you're a, a guy at a bar. Yeah. That's already 15 strikes against you. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I, I'm drunk at a bar. You like that, right? <laughs> no, almost no one does. Yeah. The waitress who's dealt with it for uh, six or seven hours already of her shift. Yes, not a rare opportunity for her. That's not her thing. Oh. Uh, a drunk guy who uh, likes newspapers. Another sweaty guy. Sweet. Oh, you've got a jazz guitar? Yeah, that idiot over there has a bass guitar. Neither one of you are playing. Yeah, so you should get together. Yeah, you should get together. Leave me alone. So I can make money. Yeah, and talk to the trumpet player. Now there, that guy. <laughs> that he's guy actually does. on stage playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a good song as far as like music goes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lyr lyrically, like, and listen to, we have, we have said this before. They're like um, running on ice. I think we both agreed was pretty damn tight lyrically. Yes, fantastic. And uh, uh, last week was actually, yeah, last week was actually a pretty tight little song. This is not. This is a lyrical mess. You know, yes, it is a lyrical mess, and not much goes on. And you know, you could argue that that is smart, and it kind of keeps the words out of the way, true, because it is about the music and the solos. And, uh, you know, there are genres where the lyrics matter a lot and there yeah. are other genres where they don't matter so much. And maybe jazz is one where it's a little less important. Yeah, true. Exactly what's going on between the characters. Yeah. And it is uh, very, uh, because of who Billy Joel is, is a guy who obviously is very curious, which is a good quality. So he has songs that are just wildly different from the other one, which is, again, one of the reasons why we can enjoy him for a long time he takes swings yeah because if you're just you know doing the just the way you are which is a lovely song but if that's all you're doing it then you're bred <laughs> yeah and sure <laughs> yeah. you can like that but and you may even revisit it but you're not likely to go back and go back and go back right otherwise you just have that one album yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't, we never give these songs grades, do we? No. I think that's probably good. But if yeah. we were gonna, I'd say B, feels like a solid B. Yeah, uh, elevated by the music itself and yep. yeah. Yeah, it, but yeah, like you say, jazz, who cares what the words are really? If yeah. this was a folk song, where it's all lyrics and the music barely matters, then you'd have a real problem. You'd have a solid F. <laughs> like, hey man, you gotta you gotta say Ali, or this song's going yeah. nowhere. <laughs> also, still fix that somehow. <laughs> yeah, there's gotta be a way. Ali, don't you go downtown? Okay, but he says Ali, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not crazy. And I was trying to think, like, do New Yorkers pronounce it that way? I'm like, not really. No, because it also, I, I hadn't seen it written, 
and I honestly thought it was A L L Y, Allie. Right. That's what I thought it was. Sure. And then for a little bit, I thought, well, maybe Alibaba. Maybe that's what it is. It's this, but no. All right, you got some trivia for me? I do. I'm trying to remember if I've already told you about this. Billy Joel likes to sing songs in the style of other artists. We know that um, very egregiously. Um, Garth Brooks did that once in the style of Billy Joel. And do you know the name of the song? And I will say he taught himself how to play the saxophone solo and it was great. Well, that's amazing, man. Really sounds like mid, mid 70s Billy Joel on one song. I don't know the answer to either trivia question. I don't know the answer to, did you ask me this before? <laughs> uh, I don't know the answer to this question either. So what, what was the song? The song is called One Night a Day. One Night a Day. It's a guy who's getting over a relationship one night a day. I am going to listen to that. Listen to that. It's beautiful. It's like what Billy Joel would sound like if he had a good voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> one Night a Day by Garth Brooks. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I wanna, really I'm cool. going to listen to that. Now, uh, no surprise, Garth Brooks is a dweeb and therefore kind of a big Billy Joel fan. Yeah, absolutely. And in the goodest way. And uh, bonus, you know, bonus trivia question. He also covered a Billy Joel song. That I did not know. What was it? It was uh, Shameless. Oh, great. Yeah. And did what sounded way better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's an interesting thing to do. And that's such a musician thing to do because it's not like Shameless is, you know, one of the big Billy Joel songs. And if you're going to cover one, that's a smart one to cover for that reason. Yeah. I feel like he had a number one hit with it. <laughs> Whereas Billy Joel very much did not. Yeah. Um, I think the, that's one of those where he heard that song and was like, oh, there's, I can do something with this one. Yeah like ties into something that i'm good at i can fix this pick this one instead of like still rock and roll to me or something yeah absolutely one of the ones where you're like oh you didn't it's fine that this exists right like, like the dixie the, chicks the covered amazing. the dixie chicks covered landslide and it's fine but also <laughs> the smashing pumpkin pumpkins covered landslide and it's also fine and uh we could probably just have the Fleetwood Mac one and we'd be fine. Right. And all of them are the same for the most part, except different singer. Yeah. You see, you can, I think you can expose yourself as uh, being bad at ideas <laughs> by covering the wrong song. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel like uh, Guns N' Roses covering Knocking on Heaven's Door. Oh, Lord. Made me think like, oh, you're stupid. <laughs> that song's perfect already. Yeah. What are you doing? Because you know you what this song... You have to take something that can be upgraded. Yeah. If it's Add already some... perfect, you shut up and you don't sing it. And they just put crap in it. There's the phone noise. Oh, yeah. The whole thing is not necessary. The, the whole reason... Ugh, yes. Oh, all day. That's a whole separate show. <laughs> yeah, Alex, bad and, covers. Alex and Jim talk about why Guns N' Roses is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah, we got more. All right. I mean, so now we got Moawa. Oh, yeah. So now I got all kinds of cash, fat cash. Oh, you're a big shot. I, I, uh, I, oh, that could have been. I could have <laughs> been. But I'll tell you what, though, I got a plan. You could have this money easy oh. <laughs> easy money yeah i think that's just it easy money yeah uh, um, it was a movie with rodney dangerfield yep oh uh, that had i think three billy joel songs in it and they were not written for the movie no 
They were and it's chosen. very obvious when you watch the movie. Yeah. They are just was... fucking crammed in there. Yeah. So does that mean, was Rodney Dangerfield a fan? Maybe? It's possible. I don't know. It's probably it's more likely that... Like some corporation owned another corporation and there is some sort of integration deal. Yeah. I bet it was just they had a script called Easy Money and then he had a song called Easy Money. <laughs> yeah. And then they went, ah, well, that's that's easy, they said. Yeah. Well, we'll sell more albums. Cool. To... And now I don't normally do this, but that uh, breezes right into what I want to talk about next week because I do find it kind of funny that it's in that movie. Easy Money is the song for next week. <laughs> okay. And I read some interesting things about it, so we can talk about it at length. At length, but uh, just to let you know, Phil Spector was involved in this. <laughs> okay. In this song, I haven't heard "Easy Money" in so long. And why would you? I have to look it up. Wow. Now here's what's interesting to me: is it wasn't written for this movie. But it sounds like a song that belongs on a movie soundtrack. Yeah, and it's on Innocent Man. Yep. Wow. And I didn't realize that either. I didn't realize it was on an Innocent Man. And I didn't realize what it, we'll talk about it. Obviously, we'll save all this, some of this gold for next week. But it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to me what it's supposed to sound like. You know, because you've got your Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons on Innocent Man. You've right. got uh, you've got a big band song, uh, Tell Her About It. You've got a, all different kinds of things that are coming up genre wise. And just it's interesting to see what he thinks this sounds like. <laughs> and I don't know that he I don't know if he's right. I, I mean, I don't know if he nailed it as far as like the genre. Right. To where because it doesn't necessarily evoke um 60s to me which is why i think it didn't occur to you this was on that album this actually right. just kind of sounds just like a smaller billy joel song from the 80s it just sounds like billy that you know yeah yeah not part of the theme at all yeah also, i have a quick question you keep saying phil specter are you sure you're not talking about phil ramon i bet i am <laughs> Because I've done the same thing inside my head. I bet I am. <laughs> I'll bet you are, because I don't yep. think you're with him ever. Ah, oh, that's great. If if that's true, which is probably true, classic Jim. <laughs> classic Jim. God yeah. bless. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I hey, I had a seizure. Give me a, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, all the breaks in the world. Oh, yeah. So next week I'm gonna we'll talk about this and and all the work that Phil Collins did on this album. <laughs> all right. You think my name is Phil also? <laughs> right, yeah. I just think it's great. A lot of people don't know how much time Billy Joel spent producing albums with Phil Hartman. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> God bless you. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed uh, our new show. Jim doesn't know Phil's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's not to love? I have a particular kind of aphasia. I can't distinguish between Phil's. Is that what <laughs> kept taking me to those Wilson Phillips concerts? <laughs> uh, hey, I have a question. Is, am I supposed to take this sticker off my hat? I feel like it's maybe where they scan the price. Yeah, it doesn't but look like stuff. it belongs up there. It looks wrong, right? Okay. Yeah. It's how the government tracks me. Yeah. And it does look like it has a tab that you could pull it off with. Oh, that's something to look into. Am I right? Is there a little tab right there? Well, I'm not taking the hat off. Okay. That. But you could do this and see. <laughs> could, well, let's say I could do this. Uh, oh, no, okay. Yeah, that comes off. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the whole reason I wanted to talk to you. So. <laughs>
You should got to get a guy. You got to, there's a service. You get a guy come in and he'll take that right off for you. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get a task rabbit. <laughs> uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for listening. Easy money. Ha, ha, ha.